Good morning, you guys. So the Lord woke me up with this this morning. And I'm, I'm going to share it because I think this is really important. I, you know, I'm still unsettled in my heart. And I've been hearing from a lot of other believers <clears throat> that we're all unsettled. And, um, yeah, something's up. Big time something's up. And I think it's more than just what, um, sorry, let me move this thing because it's kind of eh, in my face. Okay. Um, a friend of mine sent me a video about um, some things that this one person knows about. And I, I know that that's a part of it, but it's not the whole thing. Um, and it's, it's stuff that he, this guy was talking about, um, the new like OS systems that are being downloaded on phones. We know the deal with that. Um, sorry, my mom just texted me. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, yeah, we know that that's part of it, but this is, there's a bigger, there's something big there. It's big. Maybe perhaps this weekend, you know, if we're still here, <laughs> I mean, you know, rapture could have been any time, like from like May 14th. It's just been high alert time ever since. So we are super duper on high watch, like every day, every moment. <clears throat> um, but yeah, like where I'm at, it's the air is just weird. It, the, the sense you have in like, just, it's just weird. It's just weird. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to get into the whole thing of it. And especially because well, I'm not even going to go there because I'm just not going to go there. All right. <clears throat> so here we go. This is what the Lord gave me this morning. This was specific. And he wanted me to make sure you guys know this. Um, he gave it to me in two ways. Um, I was talking with a friend of mine. We were you know, texting back and forth because she and her husband live halfway across the world from me and so um, when we text each other it's kind of fun because you know they're texting in the middle of the night and I'm, I'm texting like in their middle of the night it's very funny anyway um she said she said take a look at the scripture and I went that's it and the Lord said you need to do a video on this on this this morning get it done and I went okay and that was the still small quiet voice because he doesn't always do still small quiet voice it's just an unction a knowing you know, a download, those, those kind of things. Um, sometimes it's a hunch. When I got on here and was telling you about the sense of my spirit, that was coming from a hunch. Do you know what I mean? So I just try to be clear with you guys so you, so you have an idea of how the Lord leads so you know how to expect it for you because there's no difference between any of us. How he leads me is how he'll lead you. Um, now in specificity, like he gives me a lot of visions that the Lord does that. He may give you a lot of dreams. Some people, he really highlights scriptures out of the word. And then with that scripture, they get a knowing, they get the download. So, you know, specifically it'll be different, but just in general, he talks how he talks. Okay. So we're going to go to, um, where is that? I just woke up. <laughs> he always does this to me when I just wake up. Okay, can't even really see completely. Been using my faith for a lot of things. I haven't used my faith for my eyeballs yet, but you know, whatever. We'll probably be raptured by that time. Okay, 1 Corinthians uh, 1. All right, so we're going to pray together. 1 Corinthians 1, verses 4 through 9, and I'm in New King James. Oh, so, Heavenly Father, I pray over everyone watching this video, over my entire channel family, our entire channel family, for this is your channel. It has nothing to do with me. This is all you. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. And Father God, we ask, as you say in 1 Corinthians 4 through 9, with that we thank our God always concerning, uh, concerning everybody on the channel here. For the grace of God, which is given to you by the anointed Jesus... And I pray that we are all enriched in everything by him in all utterance and knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in all of us. 
so that we come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, that's good. Who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. For God is faithful by whom you were called into fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, there's so much in that scripture. Um, okay. So thank you, Father God, for giving us all utterance, all of us, that we have understanding, enlightening our eyes, speaking to our hearts, Father God. We pray, Father God, that we have wisdom and revelation knowledge, as you say in Ephesians 1 prayer, and that our eyes be enlightened as to how you would you want us to go, how you want us to move, because people are, are having to make decisions too. Mm. Hallelujah. I thank you for enlightening everyone's heart as to the things that they need to know and what they need to do. So, Father God, I pray that you think through the, my mind, speak through my mouth. Hallelujah. None of me and all of you. Precious Lord Jesus, we give you all the glory. We thank God for you and for the sacrifice of what you've done for us. Because you did what you did, we're able to be with you. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God, for sending your precious son for us. Hallelujah. To pull us out of the pit. Hallelujah. We thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Awesome. Um, I have a little water and a little coffee here, so I might be having my beverages, just to let you know. Oh, uh, thank God my husband puts up with me. <laughs> He's a good man. Okay, so, someone asked me about this. And when one person asks, and actually, I hadn't even thought about this when, when I first saw this. The Lord reminded me of it. When one person asks you about a particular thing, that means other people have the very same question. And actually, I, I, I don't normally look at like how many sus subscribers I have because I, I don't care about it. It's all God. It's all him. Like I said, you know, <laughs> I'm used to this channel having three and I, there's over 500 now. So I'm just, and that was, I don't know. I looked the other day and I just thought, oh, maybe I should look and see how many subscribers there are. It's like 503 or something. I don't know. I was like, whoa, all glory to God. Has nothing to do with me. It's all him. So praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And one of the other things, if you're just, if you're just new to this, actually, there's two, actually two things <laughs> is one is, um, most people got to know me because of my NDE. Either it was on my channel or when I did it, uh, did an interview with Jeff Mara. And so that's kind of how it got kicked off. And I wasn't anticipating this at all. And we're just, you know, believers coming together to fellowship, you know, because we're supposed to build one another up. And that's what the Lord kept showing me is the body of Christ needed to be built up because right now there's an extreme amount of fatigue for all of us. Everything we've been through since last year with the election and all that stuff and all this expectation because we're, we are waiting for our Lord. And there were all sorts of high watch dates and high watch times. And, and you know, it can, it can hurt your heart when a high watch date passes, comes and goes. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, are we there yet? You know what I mean? So the Lord impressed upon my heart of do this, the body of Christ needs to be built up. Now, I'm doing it as a means of edification. I'm not gonna sit there and do the news. There are other people that do that. You know, Lisa Boyce is great for that. And and there are some other believers that do that. J.D. Farag is great for that. Um, and if you don't like these people, don't worry about it. Don't listen to them. Go to whomever the Lord is calling you. And it's okay if we disagree. Our plumb line is Jesus. He is our plumb line and he will straighten us all up, me and everybody else with where we got it wrong. You know what I'm saying? So let's not go there because the world will know us by our love for one another, not by beating one another up because we don't see things the same. Come on, let that go. 
You know what I mean? We need to be fellowshipping together, helping one another as we see the day approaching, as scripture says, helping one another as we see the day approaching. And boy, it's coming. And I mean, like, I, I'm on such high alert. It's, I couldn't even, I, it's like, I couldn't even believe uh, that it hasn't happened yet. And I can't believe I'm even on more high alert. <sighs> okay, now, two things. If you wouldn't mind, type in the comment section, if you've had an NDE, you can say, yes, I've had an NDE. If you wanna share it, you know, with everybody in our channel family and whomever reads these, great, put it in there. Um, so if you've had an NDE, let us know about it. You can either just say yes or actually write it down in the comment section. And write down, um, you know, so if you didn't have that, well, also if you did have it, also state where you're from, either the state, you know, which state in America or the country. Because I know we got a lot of people here from a lot of different places. And it's just cool just to get to know your family. You know what I mean? Because we're sharing with one another and this is awesome. And if we're still here and this channel gets up to a thousand members, I think I can actually do a live, a, a live, which would be great because we can, you know, chat and talk back and forth and ask questions. And so awesome. Great. If we're still here. So was there anything else, Lord? Okay. I'm clear. All right. So this is about children. Someone had asked me, uh, eh, I don't know. I don't remember timelines because every th day has been a blur since June. Uh, so I don't remember the timeline. Um, someone had asked me, are children going in the rapture? Yes, they are. If they are below the age of accountability, um, what that is, if you don't know what that is, there's a certain age. Every child will hit it. Some people, it's when they're older. Some people, it's when they're younger. For me, I remember the point when it happened. I was actually eight years old. And there was a shift that happened. And I, and, and I remember it was just so vivid that I was just like, wait, I'm like, what, what just happened? And I was walking to my friend's house. She lived like a few blocks away from me in the same complex that I lived in, that I grew up in. And um, she, uh, anyway, so I was walking to her house. And, and I, I just, I, I was walking down the street and I just felt this shift. And I'm like... And I was looking around at all the houses and the cars and everything. And all of a sudden it looked different. And I didn't know what that was. Since then, I know that I all of a sudden became the age of, a, of accountability. And I knew that I would never be the same again. I wouldn't be like I was just, you know, like three minutes before. That that, that had all passed and I now was, was different. So it's, it's a point in time when you can actually cognitively make the decision of choosing Jesus or not. And that's different for every person. Um, people with disabilities, you know, cerebral palsy or um, uh, autism and things like that, they're, they're not, they're not they, they don't have accountability. The Lord's taken them, okay? So I don't care how old they are because they don't have accountability. They don't have that. The Lord is taking them to heaven, okay? So they're going in the rapture too. Sorry, random weirdo bird. Sorry, this is totally, what is that? Okay, I, that's a bird I have never seen and he just all of a sudden shows up. Very strange. I don't even know what that is. Okay, I'm not even gonna go there. That's so weird. That's so weird. Okay, that probably means something, but you don't have to let me know, Lord, because I don't know what that means. Okay, we're gonna go to Matthew 24. So if kids are not at the age of accountability, they're going in the rapture, no matter what their age. It's the age of accountability. Now, you know, when kids, you know, say, you know, maybe some people don't hit accountability till they're 13. I mean, that could happen. Do you know what I mean? Um, so the Lord will be taking them. Also, there will be children left here who got to the age of accountability. 
their parents did the PC thing of, I'm not teaching my kids any religion. Let them figure it out for themselves, you know, because they think that's so smart. Morons. Um, that, um, you know, it could be that even if they were Christian and they didn't teach their kids, which shame on them, you know, you're supposed to train up a child in the way that they should go. So I don't get me going on that. That makes me mad. So anyway, if they never taught their kids about the Lord, there might be kids around without their parents because the kids never accepted them. They got to the age of accountability. So that can happen. I hope it doesn't, but I don't know. Anyway, but kids are more mm, vulnerable. You know what I mean? Where if a kid's like 11 years old or 12 years old or whatever, I have a suspicion they're going to be, you know, receiving the Lord right quick. But this is just speculations. These are just musings. Don't get weird. I'm just thinking out loud, as Bro Chooch says. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to Matthew. I have a boatload of scriptures here um, about what God said about kids. So let's go to Matthew 24, 10. Is that what that is? Sorry, I can't quite read my writing. <clears throat> it's very, very, very small here. There it is, 24, 10, Matthew 24, 10. Matthew 24, 10. No, that's not right. Matthew, that's not the right one. What scripture did I mean? That wasn't it. Hmm. Hold on one moment. Okay, I, I must have written down the wrong verse. <clears throat> I must have written down the wrong verse. Okay, so let's just move on. Let's go to Jeremiah 50, 45. Jeremiah. All right, Jerry, where are you? Jerry 50, 45. Uh, 50, 45. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to read this in Amplified. I like this in Amplified. Therefore, hear the plan of the Lord. So this is his plan, which he has made against Babylon. FYI, if you don't know this, Babylon is referring to America. Yes, it was of a specific area, and it's that area in the Middle East, but it's actually America. When you re read Revelation 18, and there's a few verses in 17, it's describing America. And when you read Jeremiah 50 and 51, it's America. And the nations that are surrounding us now and plotting for war are all mentioned, I think, in Jeremiah 50. Is it 50? Or is it 51? One of them. They're all mentioned there. So, yay. Yeah, you can't read those scriptures without um, reading the uh, that we're saved from wrath scriptures because it's, it's a little tough to read them. <clears throat> but we are taken out of here. Uh, Revelation 18.4 and 18.23. Because the bride is no longer heard. The bridegroom is no longer heard. We're taken out of the way. Okay. So, you know, moving on. <clears throat> 45. Therefore, hear the plan of the Lord, which he has made against Babylon, and his purposes, which he has formed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely they shall be dragged away, even the little ones of the flock. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate because of them. And they're fold, amazed, and appalled at their fate. Um, at, the, at the cry, Babylon has been taken. The earth shall tremble, and the cry shall be heard among the nations. Yay! Okay, but the little ones of the flock will be taken. Okay? So, the little ones of the flock. We are his sheep. We hear his voice. We're part of his flock. Okay, cool. Um, Isaiah... Ay, ay, ay. 47, 9. Isaiah 47, 9. <clears throat> Isaiah 47, 9. But these, oh, this one's so good, man. But these two things shall come to you in a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. 
They shall come upon you in their fullness because of the multitude of your sorceries, for the great abundance of your enchantments. I'm not going to get into all that. Sorcery means in Greek, pharmakeia. I can't remember what the Hebrew word is. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to leave all that alone. There's a lot in that scripture, but it'll come to you in a moment in one day. The loss of children and widowhood. So kind of interesting which is telling me there's probably a lot of men that believe and women that do not so that's gonna freak some people out can you imagine like people you know like I, I I have a sister-in-law who's pregnant now I don't know if she believes in the Lord I have no idea but <laughs> I just keep thinking of people who have whom I see that are pregnant and I'm just like wow I hope you believe in the Lord because if you don't you're gonna absolutely just freak out. Can you imagine being being prego and like you lose you like all of a sudden the baby's gone? I mean not like gone. Anyway, <clears throat> moving on. That was forty seven nine. Okay. That was Isaiah um uh, forty seven nine. Matthew nineteen fourteen. Matthew. Maybe that's what it was. Uh yeah, Matthew nineteen fourteen. It wasn't 24, it was 1914. Okay, Matthew 1914. Sorry, I'm just kind of getting it going here. All right, yeah, we know this one, right? But Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. You know what I mean? Because there's many layers of meaning in a verse of scripture. It's not just one thing. The Lord is just so cool. There's all these layers and they all go together. They don't ever uh, conflict with one another. They all go together. So let the children come unto me. Yeah, way cool. All right, where am I? Isaiah 49. Oh yeah, this is another good one. Isaiah 49. <clears throat> Yeah. Isaiah 49. Uh, yeah. So we can go to 22. Well, let's just read 22 through 20. 25, I think. Let me just double check this. I mean... Yeah. Okay. So I'm in Isaiah 49, 22 through 25. I'm going to read this in New King James. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up my hand in an oath to the nations and set up my standard for the peoples. They, not the peoples, they shall bring your sons in their arms. That's the angels. They shall bring your sons in their arms and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. You think the Lord isn't going to send his angels for kiddos, especially infants? Come on. So good. Okay. Kings shall be your foster fathers and their queens your nursing mothers and they shall bow down to you with their faces to the earth and lick up the dust of your feet. Then you'll know that I am the Lord for they shall not be ashamed who wait for me. So that tells me there's a gap osis between when the kids are taken and when we are taken. I've been asking the Lord about that because we don't really have a, I mean, there's a gap opus, gap, gap osis there 22 and 23 for they shall not be ashamed who wait for me. So that's telling me that we're still going to be waiting for him. You know what I mean? If we take it linearly. Now, verses are not always linear one to the next. Sometimes they are, but sometimes they're not. So <clears throat> I don't know. So I'm still kind of seeing how the Lord leads on that. Um, you know, it would be like God because this is in his character. Remember the, the videos about his character and his blood? 
His character is to use everything as a testimony to save as many people as he can. So, yeah, he's going to be using that to get as many people to him as possible. So it'll probably be something like three days. Probably. Because you know how people are. It, when time goes on and lingers, they get apathetic. But when you hit it early, it changes everything. So I'm not saying that that's a thus saith the Lord. That's just a sense that I have. You know what I mean? Okay. Verse 24. Okay, this is awesome. Um, shall they... What is that? Shall they pray be uh, shall they pray be taken from the mighty or the captives of the righteous be delivered? But says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. Taken away? In Greek it's harpazo. I can't remember what it is in Hebrew. Yeah. Awesome. And the pray and the prey of the terrible be delivered. For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. So with everything we're going through now, we're considered the prey of the terrible. You know what I mean? Because they are literally preying on us. P-R-E-Y. Not P-R-A-Y. P-R-E-Y. Yeah. Yeah. Because they think we're idiots. Um, yeah. Well, whatever. He's going to take us away and he's going to save the children. <clears throat> he's going to contend with him who contends with you. That's what the tribulation is about. Yeah. Fun. Fun times. Okay. Not for them. Fun for us. Because we're out of here. All right. Cool. Where did I just go? I just went to Isaiah 49. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit long. Whatever. <laughs> Isaiah 49. Uh, Matthew. Did I do that? He hmm. Hema, hema. No, it was Matthew. Where, where am I? Goodness gracious. I did that one. Oh, Matthew 24, 19. That's what that one was. 24, 19. Did I do that one? Yeah, Matthew 24, 19. That's what it was. I knew I had one in Matthew 24. Goodness gracious. 24, 19. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? So we're talking about the Lord taking the children away. And pray that your flight may not be in winter. Whoops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> 2019. Uh, 2419. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. Can you imagine? Those who are pregnant and nursing kids and all of a sudden your kid, like, whoosh, vapors. That's going to freak some people out. That's a testimony. You know what I'm saying? So where'd my kid go? And of course, you know, the devil's going to do what he's going to do. However, there's tons of scripture that the Lord says, this is going to be a testimony about the rapture of the, of the church. It's going to be a testimony. So I don't care what the devil does. He's not bigger than God. Are you kidding me? Come on. <laughs> Get real. Okay. Hosea 9, 11 to 14. Hosea 9. Uh, let me look back here for a second. Hang on. Hosea 9. Yeah, I did that. Hosea 9. Where'd you go, buddy? Hosea 9, 11. Is that what that was? Hosea 9, 11 to 14. Okay. Oops. Wrong one. Wrong chapter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Sweet. Okay. Coolness. Here we go. As, uh, 9 verse 11, as for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like a bird. Yeah. When we're resurrected, it's in glory. It's interesting. No birth, no pregnancy, no conception. So, there's not going to be birth or pregnancy because babies are taken, but there's not going to be any conception either. And with this whole viper, with what it does, it destroys your reproductive system. Good times. So, um, yeah. Um, verse 12. 
Though they bring up their children, yet I will bereave them to the last man. Yes, woe to them when I depart from them. So you know how Jesus told Paul, you know, when he showed up and like knocked him off his donkey? He said, uh, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He was going to go persecute the church. He didn't say, why are you persecuting them? He said, why are you persecuting me? Same deal. Woe to them when I depart from them. And why? Because we're in him and he's in us. That's why and when people get weird about um, the second, uh, second Thessalonians 2 chapter, which talks about the, the, um, the restrainer being removed. And some people get weird, okay? They're like, no, that's the Holy Ghost. No, that's that's believers. Or no, that's not believers. That's the Holy Spirit. And they, they separate it. There's no separation. The Holy Ghost is in us. So if the Holy Ghost is removed, we're removed. Okay? Okay. And, well, okay. I'm just going to leave that alone. <coughs> so anyway, woe to them when I depart from them. So cool. When he takes the babies... He's taken them out. There's not going to be any conception, right? Which, thank God. Can you imagine babies being born during the tribulation? <sighs> Horrible. Okay, 13. So, babies aren't going to, there's going to be no conception. Just as I saw Ephraim, like Tyre, planted in a pleasant place, so Ephraim will bring out his, will bring out his children, so Ephraim will bring out his children to murderers. Okay. So that's kind of going back as to what they've been doing because the deletes, thank you, RV there yet. <laughs> um, the deletes have been sacrificing kids. And if you don't know about this, don't worry about it. Those of you that do, you know what I'm talking about. So they've been sacrificing and they, they ha it's just, it's just not right. They have full on baby making factories that are created just for these sacrifices. So, um, anyway, I'm going to leave that alone. I've done a lot of research. If you haven't done it, I would suggest don't because it's, it's, it, it's hard on your heart. It's really hard on your heart. <clears throat> so don't do that. I spent way too much time crying about it cause it was awful. <clears throat> Verse 14, give them, O Lord, what I will, sorry, give them, O Lord, what will you give? Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breasts. So, Lord's taking his kids. He ain't going to let his kids be here for the, what is coming on the earth is the worst time in history. And it's not just the last three and a half years. People get weird about that because it's broken into two parts. Yeah? So. It's not just the last three and a half. All seven years are horrible because the restrainer's not here. We've never lived in a world where there's not a restrainer. And <clears throat> the restrainer, Holy Spirit, in us, when we pray, and for those of us that pray in the Spirit, you know what I'm talking about. We pray things that we know not of, as it says in, in um, Romans 8, 23, 24, 26, somewhere in there, that <clears throat> we pray things that we know not what it's about so the Lord can get things done because he's got his word spoken in the earth. So we're able to halt and stop a lot of stuff that's going, that's been coming down the pike. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and when that's at, when, when the Holy Ghost is out of here and when we're out of here, this is going to be bad. The first three and a half years is going to be bad. The last three and a half years is going to be far worse. Okay. And don't get weird. And again, it's not about fighting with one another and proving that you're right over this person or you're right and I'm wrong. Who cares? We agree on the plumb line, our Lord Jesus. So you cannot disagree with me. That's fine. Yeah, we have fellowship on Jesus. Okay, I digress. Where am I? Hosea. Yeah, cool. All right. Um, Ezekiel. Yeah, Ezekiel. He's got a he's got a boatload of scriptures in here about this. I mean, so and it's more than two or three because out of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. There, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve that I have, and there's probably more. That's just the ones I found. Um, where was I? Ezekiel twenty-four. 
Okay. I know. I can sense that you're enjoying this, that it's longer. I, 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 I sense that. That's cool. Well, and, and two, we need some building up. You know what I mean? Because <clears throat> we've been kind of getting hammered here and, and just hit with a lot of funkadelic stuff. So this is where you can have hope. The children are going to be raptured. They're getting out of here, and they're getting out of here first to be a testimony. You know what I mean? It's awesome. Who knows? It may just be 12 hours. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a God number because he's God. He does stuff like that. So, woohoo. Maybe it'll be three hours. I don't know. Could be three days. I don't think it's 12 days. That's just, I don't, I, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You know? So awesome. What a great time to, uh, to, you know, g give testimony during that when, when the children are taken. Oh, it's going to be so good. So good. So good. So good. Okay. Where am I? Ezekiel 24, 25 to 27. Okay. Coolness. Uh, 24 verses 25 to 27. Yeah. And you son of man, Will it not be in the day when I take from them their stronghold, their joy and their glory, the desire of their eyes and that on which they set their minds, their sons and their daughters? On that day, one who escapes, the harpazo is an escape, right? We've talked about that before. If you don't know about that, look at my previous videos. On that day, the one who escapes will come to you to let you hear it with your ears. Uh, sorry, that's one of the new ver verses. I don't think I've ever seen that. I have it highlighted, but apparently I've never read it. <laughs> Wait, on that day, one who escapes will come to you to let you hear it with your ears. Sorry, I'm going to read that in Amplified. Where am I? 26. This is... I know, I'll use my faith for my eyes eventually. I got my face stuck out there for a lot of things. So, you know, I don't know that I'll get this far, but whatever. They'll be better in the rapture. They'll be perfect. <laughs> um, 26. On that day, an escaped fugitive shall come to you to cause you to hear it, the destruction of Jerusalem with your own ears. They're going to come to you. To let you hear it with your ears. Eyes that see and ears that hear. The ones that escape. So where I'm going. Well, let me read the rest of this. Um, verse 27. On that day, your mouth will be open to him who has escaped. You shall speak and no longer be mute. Wow. Thus you will be a sign to them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Okay. I'm going to share this. And again, you know, I had this highlighted, but like... I Apparently, I never read it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I'm, again, I'm just sharing, and I could be way wrong, all right? And I've kind of, I've like kind of pondered it in my heart and asked the Lord about it. I mean, I ask the Lord about a lot of stuff, so he doesn't always tell you right away or give you the answer right away. It's just, you know, he wants you to kind of search the scriptures and find stuff out and, you know, stuff like that. So, like, it's like, really like good weird in like the best way when you start researching how Jesus was resurrected and that whole time that <clears throat> that it the whole time is is kind of trippy because he was raised from the dead and then um Mary saw him not his mom you know the other one uh the one who washed his feet is that the one I think that was the Mary anyway whatever I could be wrong, but you know what I mean. So Mary sees him and he says, don't touch me because I haven't been to see my father yet. Because he had to bring his blood up to heaven and not have, have it be spoiled. So don't touch me. You know, let me, I, I gotta go. 
Got to go bring this up to the altar in heaven, the altar in front of God himself, which his blood is still there. If he put it up there, it's there forever. You know what I mean? And it's living because the life is in the blood. It's not some dead, scabby, gross that it's alive and it's, I don't, uh, you know, it's on the altar. Okay. Then he comes back. Now, we don't know how long that was. We have no idea. But we know that, you know, um, his boys saw him on the road to, what was it, Emmaus? One of those. And then his boys saw him uh, on the beach. And he was, like, cooking fish for him. And then he came in into the room, you know, like, walked through the wall. So, again, we don't know timelines. And then he hung out with them. Because we don't know, because he hung out with them, I think once he walked into that room, he was there with them for 40 days. So there was a period of time of him coming and going. And if he did that, we're probably going to be doing that too. As a testimony. This is just speculation. And it, Okay? And that verse, those verses, 26 and 7... Says the one on that day, the one who escapes will come to you and let you hear it with your ears. On that day, your mouth will be opened up to him who has escaped. You shall speak and no longer be mute. You will be a sign to them and they shall know that I am the Lord. So the other thing this makes me think of is when Jesus was resurrected, so were, what was it, 500 who were resurrected with him, who went to their families. Yeah. So when we are resurrected, it sure looks like, because if God's done something before, he's going to do it again. That's his character. He says that in scripture. He said, you know, it the, the form of things, whatever, you know what I mean. If he's done it in, in before, he's going to repeat it and do it again. So since... They were resurrected and they just counted Jerusalem. It was probably global. Can you imagine your dead relative coming to you? However, they're going to be in resurrected bodies. They're going to be looking like, you know, angels, like light beings coming to them. And they're going to be giving the testimony of who Jesus is. So chances are we're doing that too. I'm just saying. That's kind of really cool. I'm stoked about that, actually, because there's some hard-headed people in my life that, you know, I just want to mm, shake them. <laughs> but I digress. Moving on. Okay, coolness. Uh, where was I? Man, that was so good. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Micah. Micah. You know, one of those itty-bitty chapters towards the end um, between Jonah and Nahum. Um, oh, and by the way, yeah, let's just do this because again, people get weird. <sighs> I'm talking about God's wrath. They're like, well, God's wrath is only the last three and a half years. And <laughs> Give me a break. Really read what the tribulation's about. And again, don't fight with me about this because I'm not going to do it. And I'm going to take away your comments if you're going to fight. No fighting. I'm not going to have any fighting in this in this channel. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to hurt other people's hearts with it. I'm not going to have discord. I'm I'm not I'm not having it. So just, you know, shh. If you don't agree with me, that's okay. I'm just telling you, it's in the book. Okay. Nahum 1 2. God Well, let me just read the the little, you know, little note on top of 2 says God's wrath and his enemies. Okay, two, God is jealous and the Lord avenges. The Lord avenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserves wrath for his enemies. It is not for the body of Christ. Besides the fact, God is not a wife beater, nor is he a child abuser. He's not going to let us see. And, and, and then other people come up and say, well, but he'll protect us. <sighs> He's not a wife beater. 
and he's not a child abuser. Because just being here would be torment in your mind, in your this in your soul, in your mind, in your will, and in your emotions. God is not going to do that. That's out of his character. Okay? So, and actually, thank you, Lord. He totally dropped that in my heart. That was one of those, Funk. he said, if people are saying that, they don't know me. They don't know my character. You have to spend more time with him. Okay? Just saying. The more time you get in to his love and you get in to how much he loves people, there is no way he would leave his kiddos here for what's coming. No way. Okay. That was for free. All right. Micah. Uh, Micah 1. I think that says 15 or 16. Let me just double check. 1. 16, 116, Micah. Make yourself bald and cut off your hair because of your precious children. Enlarge your baldness like an eagle, for they shall go from you into exile. Pretty cool stuff. The kids are going to be safe. How awesome is that? Okay, Jeremiah. No, I don't have kids. Um, <laughs> 10, 20. Jeremiah, 10, 20. 10, 20. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm, this is good. Jeremiah, 10, 20. My tent is plundered and all my cords are broken. My children have gone from me. They are no more. There is no one to pitch my tent or set up my curtains. Seriously? <laughs> That's like kind of random. That's like somebody who's just like, uh, you know, oh, my kids are basically my slaves. <laughs> anyway, kids are going to be taken from them. Awesome. Groovy. Um, Jeremiah, where was I? That was Jeremiah 10, 20. Zechariah 8, 1. Zechariah. Second to the last book of the Old Testament. Ze uh, Zechariah 8, 1. Is that right? 1 through 5. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous for Zion with great zeal. That's almost like a, I'm zealous for Zion with great zeal. Okay. With great fervor, I'm zealous for her. That's awesome. So good. You can just see his love. That's just so awesome. I'm zealous for Zion with great zeal, with great fervor. I'm zealous for her. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall... Be oh, awesome. Cool. This is totally like millennium. I will... Um, sorry, let me back my train up. Let me read this again. Yeah, this is totally like... Yeah. The little uh, snippet on the top says, Jerusalem, holy city of the future. So this is the millennium. Again, the word of, word of the Lord of hosts came saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous for Zion with great zeal. With great fervor, I'm zealous for her. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women, shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each one with his staff in his hand because of great age. The streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. So if it's full of them, it means it wasn't. Just saying. Okay. Mm. In the millennium, um, there's a lot of people that didn't die in the tribulation, believe it or not. <laughs> And they wind up having an extremely long lifespan. There's more I could get into about that, but that may be for another time because that's going to be for another time. Um, never mind, moving on. Uh, Jeremiah, this last one, 31 verse 15. Jeremiah 31 15. 
Jerry, where'd you, where'd I put you? There he is. <laughs> right after Isaiah 31, 15. Okay. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thus says the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they are no more. So, there you have it. God's going to take the children first, you know, and there is a time period. And clearly by that one scripture in Ezekiel, was it Ezekiel? I think it was Ezekiel. I mean, you know, we're going to be coming back. What a, what a wonderful time to testify to people. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because the Lord's trying to get as many people off this planet before the tribulation. He's trying to save as many as he can. So, anyway, there you have it. That's today's little tidbit. Um, yeah, so the children are going first, okay? All right. Um, remember, write in the comments if you've had an NDE, and if you want to share it with everybody, great. Or if you'd rather email it to me, that's cool too. My email's in the description box. Um, and also state uh, where you're from, what state and what country. All right. I love you guys. And um, you know the deal. If the Lord leads or if I seem to have unction, um, I'll, I'll come back on. I try to come. I do try to come on a couple of times a week. Sometimes it happens a couple of times in a day. Um, <clears throat> I just want to help keep the body of Christ edified and built up for such a time as this. Because we're supposed to be coming together and, you know, like precious faith, building one another up, not tearing one another down, building one another up as we see the day of approaching. Because we see our Redeemer. He's coming. He's coming. Okay. Love you guys. Like a big old nuclear blessing. You guys are a huge, fat nuclear blessing. Awesomeness. Coolness. Okay. Have a groovy day and um, chat soon.